Welcome to Study Topics. This week we're going to be covering anatomy. Now if you need help preparing for your exams, try taking our premium access video course where you can study solo and pass the exam. If you joined me last week for our webinar, Must Know Anatomy Part 1, some of this will be a review. So let's see how you do. Alright, let's talk about the important features of the flexor retinaculum. So you may be asking, where does the flexor retinaculum attach? The flexor retinaculum is also known as the transverse carpal ligament or anterior annular ligament. Be familiar with all three terms as you're not sure which one may show up on the exam. So the flexor retinaculum is a fibrous band on the palmar side of the hand near the wrist. It arches over the carpal bones of the hands covering them and forming the tunnel. On the ulnar side, the flexor retinaculum attaches to the pisiform bone and the hook of hamate. On the radial side, it attaches to the turbicle of the scaphoid bone and the medial part of the palmar surface and the ridge of the trapezoid bone. So to summarize that, on the lateral side, we see it attached to the tubercles of the scaphoid and trapezium, and on the medial side, the pisiform and hook of hamate. So if you had a question that stated that you had a fracture or space occupying lesion in this area, you would know that it would affect the carpal tunnel and in turn cause signs and symptoms that are consistent with carpal tunnel. Do you know what these signs and symptoms are? Let's take a look at what are some of the common signs and symptoms of carpal tunnel. In the beginning stages, we'll see intermittent tingling or numbness in the median nerve distribution. And we'll talk a little bit more about what that looks like in an upcoming slide. We see that it's worse with static gripping. Can you think of some examples of what static gripping could look like? Now we know carpal tunnel is more common in older females. So you may see examples like holding onto a steering wheel, chopping vegetables, or gripping a walker. As carpal tunnel syndrome progresses, we often see patients complaining of tingling or numbness that is constant and often accompanied with a feeling of burning. Again, as it continues to progress, we'll see the thinner muscles atrophy and have weakness. All right, so let's talk about which areas of the hand are spared and which ones are affected. So if we take a look at this photo, we'll see that the lateral palmar surface the sides of the first three digits, the lateral half of the fourth digit, and the dorsum of the distal halves of these digits are all affected. A great trip for practicing this and practicing all hand innervation is to wear a glove and use a marker and mark out what areas would be affected. If you're a visual learner, this is a great trick. Now, the palmar cutaneous branch of the median nerve, which supplies the central palm, arises proximal to the flexor retinaculum and passes superficial to it, not through the tunnel. So you need to know that the area of the palm or the hand remains normal sensation. So this picture is actually incorrect and so many pictures out there are. That's why I wanna draw your attention to this. So what would you think if the palm actually was affected? Well, in this situation, the lesion would have to be higher than the level of the carpal tunnel. Pretty cool, hey? Thanks for joining me today. 